heard say Since the first cave people turned their heads up in wonder. Since the earliest shepherds named the constellations, man has looked up at the stars with awe and a thirst for understanding. Now, in the waning days of 1956, man will have to learn a new emotion as he stares into the heavens. Fear! I fix cup. Greetings. I am Lydia Sandler of Earth. Hi, Dad. Hi, Sweet Pea. I've been thinking about that alleged meteor that came to Earth. I have reason to believe that there's more to it than meets the eye. Would you do an old man a favor and go have a look? I'll be in the observatory. Hi, Jim. Howdy, Sid. Guess what? New Zealand is having the best conditions for Aurora Borealis in over a century! Neat, huh? I'm gonna be a spaceman when I grow up. I figure if I learn everything in the whole world, I'll be such a valuable crew member that every rocket captain will want me. Deke is the greatest! He knows everything about engines. He said he helped me build a submarine engine, and we can put in it like me. Wouldn't that be keen? The only thing about Zeke is, what the heck is he seeing you? Yeah. According to the French researchers LeFoam and Bernier, a germanium-based life form could ingest only radioactive isotopes. And openings in its thermal layer could only be packed with sulfurized liquefied rubber. Radioactive isotopes would be food to a germanium-based life form. You'll never be able to get any, though. The only isotopes within hundreds of miles are in the base, and the army never let anyone in without super high clearance. Sulfurized liquid rubber could be used to repair wounds in a germanium-based life form. If I had lab equipment, I could make you some. You'll need some rubber, of course, and a liquefying agent. Some form of distilled corn-based ethyl should do the trick, and, of course, the sulfur. 
from Mars. Finally got that pro business hose out of the general's engine, but I still haven't been able to get that darn Beegis valve out. Good evening, Lydia. I was born and bred in Adam City, and I ain't ever leaving. You meet so many interesting people here. You mean that the meteor thing might have been a rocket from outer space? Probably filled with all kinds of incredibly handsome space hunts. My sister says that space creatures look just like us and move right into our cities and marry us and infiltrate our culture and that's how they take over. 
What a hunk that would be. Kinda makes you all melty all over, doesn't he? He sure goes all dreamy whenever you're around. You lucky little seductive. You look mighty pretty today. I grew up in this little town in Idaho, Calvert Crossy. I moved here because I wanted to see the big city. I never expected that I'd have as much fun as I've had working here at the filling station. You think the shooting star with the rocket from outer space? Carrying all kinds of monsters, probably. I've heard that monsters like that can just absorb people right into their body and just keep getting bigger and bigger the more people they absorb. Gross, huh? You think such a nice guy, isn't he? You're so lucky he's interested in you. What's your secret? Hi, Lydia. I hope your pop got some good photos of that shooting star thing. I grew up in the big city, Warm Springs, Nevada. Moved here to get away from all those city jerks. It's worked. For the most part. You really think that was a spaceship that landed out there in the desert? You know, that reminds me of an article I just read in the National Defiler. Said they'd set off a few atom bombs in the wrong spot. And the Earth was starting a long spiral into the sun. Said things were gonna start getting real hot. Real soon. Looking for some tips on how to be a real woman, sir? Well, considering how Zeke's been looking at you lately, I'd say you don't need any good tips. I'd say you need a good minister. Ha ha. Coming in here, but I drove it away. It's 
potatoes, monsters from space live on the ground and drag you under and erase your brain and take over your body and turn you into some kind of bum. I don't want to fight you, baby, but I'd be glad to wrestle with you. What do you say, baby? I'll put up the clothes sign and we'll do it right behind the bar here. I don't know how an egghead like your dad raised a hot piker like you, baby.
to see you. What's the matter? Did you break a fingernail trying to cook? You must mean that thing that attacked me a while ago. I chased it away, but the boss is gonna kill me when he sees all these broken dishes. I didn't get a good look at it, but it tried to grab me with the spine like this. So I think it was like, like a three-legged plant, and it was trying to blind me so it could eat me, you know?
Space, I hear that our guys have already been to the moon. And they found a place filled with babes. Beautiful babes with headlights like... Oh, uh, well, excuse me, ma'am. Anyway, I'm sure they're not half as beautiful as you, ma'am. Thank you. 
Hi again, Lydia. Beak, that meteor is a spaceship. Then your dad was right. Shouldn't we go tell him about it? You know me about as well as anybody. by an invasion force from Planet X. They plan to attack our peaceful little Phobos after conquering the Earth. Will you accept our help in defending Earth by giving us landing coordinates for your sector? of Jelgobar L.J. Zayda. But since you Earth dwellers have a fondness for short names, you can call me Barth. I was avoiding contact, but I sensed that you were carrying food and medicine. Are you not frightened of my appearance, as are all the others? Very hungry am I. Very sick. I... 
No, indeed, come I, hurt not me. My damage ship is in an arid place, not far from here, at the side of a dried up green bed. I have gathered the materials I need, but I have not yet performed the repairs. The Earth Mail is a testament to the notion that not every member of your race is a warlike primitive. I would be honored to intertwine tentacles with him. Oh, he doesn't have any, does he? Just those funny jointed things. Just like my left nest half-mother used to make, your kindness is matched by my gratitude. Less hungry now am I, but injuries are bad still. Won't shall I apply it? Oh! Never a better high pad recipe have I seen. Even in my native language, my gratitude I could not possibly express. Thinking I was that soon I would be intertwining I stock with my ancestors. Getting better, I feel. Better will I now be at operating this translator, I think. I am no longer in immediate danger. But I am still lost on a strange planet, and my spaceship is in disrepair.
Uh, do you think I could drive this thing? But it's got a lot of power, huh? while the vehicle is in motion, or you will be vaporized by hyperspatial forces. Have a pleasant journey. Thank you. inconveniences like myself and the tan annoyances who are repulsive ugly humanoids not unlike yourself but who nevertheless are fine world mates lifetimes ago planet x was a primitive warlike world like your own but we have long ago transcended such barbarism and today the pulsating inconveniences and the tanned annoyances live together as equals coexisting in peace harmony and health with a level of luxury you can't even imagine. Sickness and disease have been abolished for generations. When the time comes for a planet Exion to depart life, his friends and eggmates gather to send him off in blissful contentment. Also, it's never hard to find a really great deli. Oh, 
pleasure and an honor to meet you in Camp Covino's grand new son. Since you are a visitor, Earthwoman Falk Lydia, we can forgive such an outburst one. But you hear this well, in the council chambers, only the council members. Mark Dub L. Nicky Dicky, son of Del Gobar L. Zeta Zeta. Report! Well, 
you're a hot one, honey. After the invasion, I'll summon you to my quarters. Maybe we'll make it a threesome with that hunk you came in with. on Earth has given us our opening. That military moron on Earth gave us landing coordinates and has agreed to drop all defensive postures. What pathetic suckers. Our fleet will depart for Earth and by this time tomorrow, we will have a billion more love slaves. What was that, Melcinda? I didn't hear. I'm Melinda. Occupy. Quite understandable. Let me repeat. The 
The unscheduled landing of that Planet X ship on Earth has given us our opening. That military moron on Earth gave us landing coordinates and has agreed to drop all defensive postures. What pathetic suckers. Our fleet will depart for Earth and by this time tomorrow, we will have a billion more love slaves. What was it? It will be wonderful to restock our private harems. Yes, the Earthmen are so primitive, they have such raw energy. I don't want to downplay the pleasurable aspects of this conquest, but remember what else it brings us. With Earth under our thumb, we will be the unchallenged masters of the cosmos. Their teeming millions of rich resources will make our armies invincible. Those peace lovers from Planet X won't be able to stand in our way. Oh, I love limitless power. Prepare for atmospheric entry. Nice 
planning, Bopora. I can't wait to see the Earthlings face when they realize they've been duped. Ah, oh, here they come now. Hit the dirt, girl, and have your blasters drawn. The Earth will be ours. landing of that Planet X ship on Earth has given us our opening. That military moron on Earth gave us landing coordinates and has agreed to drop all defensive postures. What pathetic suckers. Our fleet will depart for Earth and by this time tomorrow, we will have a billion more love slaves. You've got to see it. Someone came running out there with a radio and the mob instantly turned on the leather goddess. They were routed and fled back to Phobos, abandoning most of their spaceship. Their invasion fleet is crippled. And Barth is a big hero. He's being paraded down Main Street. Come on! Son of Jelgobar L. Zeta Zeta, I am hopeful that the poor reception of fortune by some of my fellow Earthlings shall not bully your people's future relations with my planet. The existence of humans such as yourselves demonstrates that even a race as primitive as yours can produce individuals of worth and wisdom. I shall report back to my council that the people of Earth, with time, shall become a fine addition to the galactic family. And thanks to your unplanned visit to Earth, we will never again need to wonder as we gaze at the stars whether mankind is alone in the cosmos. But far, your spaceship is sitting in heat back on Phobos. How will you get home? Did I hear that someone is looking for a spaceship? Buddy, have I got a cream puff for you. I can tell you're a fellow with a stock for a bargain. Wait until you see this peach. Power everything. I know what, at this price I'm giving it away, but I've always had a soft spot for aliens. Lydia, Zeke, I'm exceedingly proud of you. When everyone else was losing their heads, you two kept your wits about you and acted with reason and humanity. Thanks, Professor, but... Today represents the dawn of a bold new age, and we are the witnesses standing at its portal. I foresee a golden future, when man and pulsating inconvenience shall stride side by side into the cosmos together. Dad, could you put a lid on it and... Oh, of course. The young ones want to be alone. Just goes to show what a silly old man I'm getting to be. Forgetting all about the pleasures of you. Even now, on the brink of this brand new adventure, we're still humans, men and women, 
with the same need, hope, and desire that men and women have harbored since we first climbed out from the trees. Oh, dear. I thought we would never be alone. Again, but they haven't seen the last of the leather goddesses of Phobos. We'll come again, and from now on, no more Miss Nice Guys. What for the thrilling final chapter of the leather goddesses? Oh, 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 oh,